to make a start And I put my poly surfboard on the rack upon my car I head down to the surfside where the waves are breaking fine I'm gonna catch a mountain but I won't go down the mine You gotta walk the plank, ride the hook Gonna left and right and keep it nice and tight And now the time is drawing near You're moving down the wall As steady as she goes You got your toes up on the nose And now you're hanging by On the Malibu And now you've hit the beach And you're feeling mighty fine You turn your board around For the second time You make it out the back The swells are coming fast The first ones are too small And so you take the last You gotta walk the plank Ride the hook Corner left and right And keep it nice and tight And now the time is drawing near You're moving down the wall Now steady as she goes You got your toes up on the nose And now you're hanging On the Malibu Let's stop And when the day is over And all the circuits meet You go down to the surf club To dance and stop the beat And when the night is through You hear the fellas say Don't forget tomorrow You got another day You gotta walk the plank Ride the hook, corner left and right, and keep it nice and tight. And now the time is drawing near. You're moving down the wall. Now steady as she goes, you got your toes up on the nose, and now you're hanging by, hanging by, hanging by, toes up on the Malibu. Up on the Malibu. Good afternoon, Richard. Is is that Hanging Five still not in the set list, surely? Surely it is. Really? Oh, absolutely. You know, a song that was written by a, a, a detective sergeant and a Supreme Court judge, it would have to stay in the set. It's a wonderful talking point. It's a wonderful talking point. <laughs> what? Uh, and your book's fascinating too, Harmony, Disorder and the Deltones, because it's not exactly what perhaps you would expect. It's not just a conversation about this happened and then we played that song, but it's a lot more, how can I put it, uh, reflective and honest, I guess, is the two words that came to mind. Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting doing the book. I, I resisted writing anything about it, you know, um, about the Deltones, but my wife was giving me a bad time sort of saying, you know, it's about time you, you keep telling these stories. Why don't you just put them down forever? But uh, I, I, I thought about what I was going to write about. And my, my prime objective, of course, in writing the book overall was to make it entertaining because that's my, that's my gig. I, I'm an entertainer. So I wanted to make it entertaining. At the same time, I wanted to make it honest. And, and the squeaky clean image of the Deltones just had to be tarnished just a little bit, surely. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, all sorts of things. Uh, let's see. Uh, the book is called Come a Little Bit Closer. And it talks about... I don't know, acid trips. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 you give a fairly candid view of the interviews you've done and the people you've done them with, uh, which made me laugh out loud. The um, Just all sorts of people and random things get a bit of a, oh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just say what I think here. Well, yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, I, but I've always been a little bit like that, uh, Richard. I, I usually try to say what I think. I'm not terribly diplomatic. But um, in writing the book, I, I, I found it very cathartic. I enjoyed the, the whole process of writing, and I, I didn't expect it even to get published, to be quite honest. And, and I did go what the editor called, uh, I did do a little bit of rambling and, uh, and wandering all over the place. But they pulled it together and, uh, and made some sort of sense of it. How did the Deltones survive for so long? How did, it, how did you manage to uh, get a gold? What was a gold album in 86? With the, How did it? How did you keep reinventing, I guess, is the question I'm asking. 
Well, I think when we first started back, you know, we, we were with the first wave of Australian pop music, along with John O'Keefe and a lot of the others. And all of us basically were all show-offs. Nobody had, I don't think any of us thought we'd have a career in, the, in music. Uh, most, most, most people around us, including our folks, our parents and friends, were telling us, you know, don't give up your day job. The music's going to be around for a while. And then Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby will reign supreme. And Elvis will die, and uh, we'll all be back at work again. But um, and so we didn't make um, we didn't make many uh, plans at all for for a long career. And I think that 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 sort of started the whole thing going. We just were gathering the ro- rosebuds while we could and uh, having a ball. And that first ten years of the of the sixties with the Deltones and all of those first waves was just one long party. It was a great time. But um, I, I, two at the point to where we, we gave it away for a few years and, and, and went into a sojourn. And when we got back, um, before, I mean, it came as such a surprise finding ourselves with a number two album, Bop Till You Drop. And then we were on with uh, Hey Hey It's Saturday. We're on the midday show. Mm-hmm. And then a whole full blown revival sort of came about right in the midst, would you believe? Of um, of the of the of the digital revolution, you know, I'll, uh, this old analog band um, all of a sudden um, was back in popularity again. And I, I, look, I have no idea, Richard. I wish I could answer the question, but I think part of the reason is that we've never had a real agenda, we've never had real goals, and uh, we've just plugged away. Also, I think there's always going to be an affection for this style of music that started it all. You know, oh, you talk about gigs, you know, the, uh, at Kinsella's with Little Patty and. And, and you're nervous about uh, about doing the gig, and then the dance floor fills. I think I think that's one of the things about the music too. It's kind of infectious. You kind of want to move. That, yeah, yeah, that seems to stay uh, across the generations. I think so, and because the music is aimed at the heart and feet, and and, and there's no doubt about it. And, and uh, it, it's music that came out of a simpler time, uh, the post-war, even though it was well after the war. It was a post-war period. There were simpler times. It was it was a, a lot of euphoria around, and it was a great time to grow up and be a, a teenager. When we first started the Deltones, and everything seemed to be new. Television was just around for a couple of years. 1956 it started. The band started in 1958. And uh, pioneering shows uh, like Six O'Clock Rock and Bandstand came on the scene. People were fascinated with television, and everybody who went on it became an instant household name and a star. So many SMSs are coming in. Uh, just found the music to my next home movie about my old mate still surfing. Yeah, you can use the <laughs> Deltones Hang Five. Just remember to make sure you pay the APRA rates. <laughs> Pee Wee is a legend. I remember he used to live in my block of flats at Maroubra Beach in Sydney in 1963. That's from Kate, who's listening in Albury. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I did too. That's exactly right. I was an eastern suburb boy, come, come up in Bronte and then moved to Coogee, then to Maroubra and back and forth. And uh, But now, of course, I've moved up to the Sunshine Coast. I'm well away. But I do look forward to getting back to Sydney. It, it's, uh, and all my friends from the surf club are still down there and uh, it's, it's a great place to be. You know, I guess uh, as we look at that period, uh, we had a revival. The Deltones had a revival in the 80s. It's funny that the band was struggling internally so much during that. I, and I guess talking to you, that's because you hadn't really made any businessy type arrangements. You hadn't done it as a proper organised thing like we would if we were setting up a shop. I suppose that all meant it unravelled a bit through that period. Yeah, it was a difficult period. We changed over, of course, from a, from a boy band, as they call them now. We were called vocal groups in the 60s and, and, and the 70s. But we were a vocal uh, vocal band, and, and uh, uh, sorry, a boy band. And then, and then we incorporated instruments into the band, and, and it grew from four to six. And, uh, and, and it was a very, very exciting period, that period that we were appearing on, on Hey Hey and, uh, and the midday show with uh, Ray Martin and, and Mike Walsh and, and those things. And, and of course, the, the Deltones were, 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 were pretty hot at that time. And, and it was, it was a heady, heady period. We had, this was a second bite of the cherry. And, mm-hmm. but of course, all, I was just desperate to get up, to try and get a record on contemporary radio. And we tried very, very hard and, and, uh, and we failed miserably. We just, just couldn't get beyond that. And I, but, you know, I know the reasons now. It, 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 it couldn't have happened. It, it should never have. I mean, it didn't happen, so uh, that was the way it went. But it was still a very exciting period, and uh, the Deltones were touring all over the country, and, and we're now still doing those shows down in Victoria. We've just finished a tour in Victoria, Warrigal, Ballarat, Sale, Hamilton, Horsham. What was it like? Oh, bands now. Oh, great, great, great. We love it. We come down about every three or four years down to do the regional areas, and, of course, we, we end up in the tour in, in, in Melbourne at the Crown. 
Uh, you're chatting to Ian Peewee Wilson. Uh, the book is Come a Little Bit Closer if you want to have a read of his thoughts about all sorts of things. You'll also get an insight into the Australian rock history through the 60s. I love this quote of the period we're talking about. Uh, Pee Wee saying, yeah, look, I'm the boss. I'm a bit uncomfortable with it because, as he quietly points out, I was mindful of the fact that I was neither a business person nor a qualified musician. Awesome characteristic. But, but that it's how the book reads too. He just kind of lays it out there. Timothy Leary seems to crop up a lot. Uh, what do you think of Timothy Leary now in the year 2014? You've read more, you've done more. What do you think of him? Well, the late Timothy Leary. And I, but, well, of course, you know, I'm reading now that uh, that Tim's work that he did back and uh, matching up uh, LSD with uh, with uh, with uh, psychiatric therapy, it's now uh, starting this bringing it back now and and it's starting to be used as a therapeutic tool. And it's it's he was a very interesting character. I mean, he came out of that whole 60s uh, um, counterculture movement. And um, I, I look back on that period of, of, of mine and, 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 and the friendship I had with uh, all my friends and, and my wife. And, and that it, it was a wonderful period to grow up and, and, and one that I have fond memories of. V- very exciting time. Pee Wee's book's hilarious because, because he just writes stuff. Seriously, like this. My wife's good looks and generosity were not inherited from her father. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, that's a man who doesn't care about brownie points in his life. That's just, uh, that's gold. That's just there. Oh, dear. (laughs) That's a drive-by shooting and then we move on. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Good Uh, lord. (laughs) (laughs) What's uh, what's been the reaction to the book? Well, it's been very favourable uh, all round, uh, Richard. I'm I'm, I'm quite pleased I I did the book. Um, There's also probably a group of friends that have gone very silent on me, and I I can't figure out why. No, I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm trying to work it out. They they haven't uh, passed an opinion on the book, but um, but apart from that, uh, it's been it's been good. Uh, I really I'm glad I put it out there, Richard. It really is me. One guy said to me from the surf club. He said, "I thought I knew a guy." He said, uh, "For 40 years," he said, and after reading the book, I said, "I don't know you at all. Who are you?" You know. So it obviously uh, 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 made some sort of impression on him. Hilarious. Uh, you do a session with Thorpey and, and Barnsley. The session was an eye-opener for me, though. And although I'm no big fan of either Barnsley or the late Billy Thorpe, their musician... <laughs> Mate, seriously, did you need that phrase? Their musicianship impressed me, and they both deserve the high regard they have in the Australian music industry. I'm no fan, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, just, that's unnecessary. That's so gold. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, look, mate, I had to do it. Look, that, these guys are a couple of really screaming rockers, and it's never been my style or the Deltane style or, or anything to do with us. You know, we've always been into to harmony and to, uh, to, uh, to, to more uh, controlled music. You know, these guys are, are right out there. And, um, I mean, I, I know, know them both, and I run into them here and there and, and everywhere else, but I'm sure they're no fans of the Deltanes either, to be quite frank. Yeah, they probably wouldn't write it in a book, though. Um, <laughs> What do you, right. Pee Wee Wilson, so you're chatting to, you can go along to Palms on Saturday the 23rd to see who else? Who, who am I seeing? Is it, are you allowed to use the words the Deltones or is it you and some friends happen to be playing music very similar to the Deltones used to? Well, I'm sorry, Richard, I don't, I don't understand the question. You mean, who, are, you allowed to, are you allowed to, who's in the band? Are you allowed to use the word the Deltones? Is it yours? Um, how does it work now? Oh well, no. The the, the guys uh, that that are with me, two of the boys have been with me for over thirty years now. Richard uh, 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 Merv Dick, the drummer and mm. uh, and vocalist, and also Woody Finlayson, who's uh, who's on the guitar, and um, and we've got a new guy that's just joined us. He's he just come into the band nineteen years ago, and um, <laughs> so the new guy we're we're, we're breaking um, uh, breaking them in. But uh, as you probably, if you read the, the, the book, that part of the book, I mean, I don't, democratic bands just don't last. I mean, we learned mm. that way back in the 60s, how difficult it is. And we can see the problems with bands. And I could see this problem reoccurring over and over again. And I'd already been through a court case with one of the ex-Dell teams. So uh, I just took control of the, of the band in that sense and, mm. uh, and uh, changed the, uh, the business structure. But my, my wife organised that and, uh, and uh, it's, it's worked out to be most harmonious. Kind of needs that, doesn't it? It just needs a leader rather than a vote all the time on everything. Well, it could bog the band down, and we went through that thing, thing through the the sixties. It was very, very difficult uh, to keep going, and even when we reformed in the eighties, it looked like it was going to go nowhere, and we were squabbling amongst ourselves. And uh, you know, to make a decision just took t- t- took t- just too long. So uh, it, it had to change. 
What's the show like that we'll see at the Palms? What do you do? Do, uh, do you take it chronologically? Do you? Uh, how do you do your set list? More or less. The, the, the opening part of the show, the opening half of the show, we do it uh, unplugged, Richard, and, and that gives us an opportunity to do songs that were around on the charts when the, the Deltones first started. And um, I know you won't remember those charts. You're far too young. But back then, it, it, they were all – it was very eclectic. There was all sorts of stuff. There was jazz. There was folk. There, there was novelty songs. There were all sorts of songs on the radio. And, and that first half, because of the lighter style of music, we can do all those, uh, those sort of songs that were around before we even got into the recording studio. And then the second half, of course, is our, is, is our recordings that we did over the years. Uh, so, is, the, is the book going to be on sale? Will you be signing stuff? Uh, yes, the book is always on sale, uh, Richard. It, uh, I carry a, a couple with me all, everywhere yep. I go. Yep, and, uh, nice. But if I sell a couple, it's difficult because I've got to get another two printed. But nevertheless, mm. um, it's still still it's still out there. Are you going to sell it on the night? Can we get that? Will you be <laughs> yes. signing? Yes, yes, I'll sign. I'll yeah. sign. You heard it here first. Uh, still getting lots and lots of SMSs in as Pee Wee's chatting. Uh, someone's bothered to write dip, 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 get a job, Shannon. Seriously, that was an SMS. You did, it went for hours. Uh, love it. The sales show was awesome. That's from Rich, who went along to your sales show and had a ball. Uh, lovely. Hmm. So good to hear it. It must be a good thing, I guess, in 2014 to know that you're still doing gigs that sell well and people come away from them grinning and having had a great time. That's not bad, is it? Well, it can't be bad, Richard. And I'm a bit stuck on it. It's a, it's a bit like a drug. You know, you get hooked on it, the smell of the crowd, the roar of the grease paint. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's really quite, a, quite addictive. And it's not unusual for us to have, you know, up to three generations in our audience. And uh, that's very, very satisfying and very, very humbling. I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, it really is humbling to have these people come backstage and say, I saw you 25, 30 years ago and I brought my son along or my daughter along to see you and she loved it too. Would you do this for a blah, blah, blah? And, and that's it's, it's, it's terribly, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I suppose it is. I, I've got a question who's running security if all these people are just able to get backstage. But, you know, your business the best. Um, Pee, we're great to chat to you. Good luck for the gig. I'm sure you don't need that. Uh, come a little bit closer is the book. Ray Martin's written on the front of it. And he said, uh, I laughed a lot. You will too. He said a few other things as well. And that pretty much sums it up. It's a fascinating history. It's a warts and all. It's Pee Wee's thoughts. Uh, it's great. It's a great read. And you can go along to the gig at Crown at Palms, uh, Saturday, 23rd of August. Hey, we're great to chat to you, mate. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Richard. Thank you. Cheers. 774 ABC Melbourne, ABC Victoria.